Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed. I'm joined by my lovely wife, Rochelle. Rochelle, season two, how you feeling? A little nervous. A little nervous. Hey, if you guys notice, we've got a new uh, video podcast. This is our first first shot at doing it. So, so we're, we're we're learning as we go. We jumped right in the video podcast. Um, we're going to try to get this up on YouTube so you can watch the watch the video podcast. Of course, we're going to put the audio on regular, all. Oh yeah. yeah, just regular on all the regular audio channels where you get your podcast. Was it on iTunes, Spotify? The website, you can, you, yeah. wherever you get your podcast, you can you can get the audio version. But the video is something we wanted to work on just because we thought it was cool, and we got we're, we've converted uh, instead of being in our closet where we <laughs> where we used to film our podcast, uh, we've took over one of our spare bedrooms and just kind of made it our, uh, yeah, well, I guess, homemade podcast studio. Yeah. Until we get something better. Until we get something better, this is going to be it. So, uh, all shall... these co- uh, posters I've collected over the years. I like them, man. I mean, you know, that's a, a lot of memories of me. on those posters. Yeah, you made fun of me for collecting. I'm memories. really surprised you kept them in such good shape. <laughs> I mean, you got to think we get these out of contests. They usually are thrown in a goodie bag, or yeah. they're in the trailer with sauce and rubs slung mm-hmm. everywhere. A lot and, of them are Memphis in May. Yeah, yeah, most of them. I said, I don't know. I see some Jack ones up. There's a yeah. couple Jack ones up there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What's the smoke? That was a Memphis in May, wasn't it? Yeah, most of them are Memphis in May. Yeah. But hey, that's cool. Two well, below. I kept them. I didn't have a place to You got to some aprons on. going? Yeah. It, it, it looks good in here. <laughs> i tell you what, it's colorful. Yeah. It's, it's very got, colorful. It's got all kinds of colors going. Yeah. But, so, we're glad to be back. It, this is um, our first episode of our second season of our podcast. And we've been on kind of our winter break. We always take um, during the holidays and the, and, and the cold months, really, just because it's too cold to be outside. Uh, cooking, we take some time off. I do a lot of hunting and got some deer meat in the freezer. Mm-hmm. So I got I got a lot of venison deer recipes I'm going to work on this year. And I hope people are excited about those. I know I am. Um, I got some duck and got some goose. I got I got all kinds of stuff in the freezer. Yeah, some duck and yeah, yeah the heck yeah. yeah. We did try that goose before Christmas. Yeah, really on the good. beefer. Yeah. And that was the first time. You know, that's the first time I ever had goose. Yeah. Um, I think it might have been the yeah. first time I and had too. I didn't do nothing to it. I just want to see what, what goose meat tasted yeah. like. We Did it in the beefer, salt. put it on salt. That was it. Salt, and that was it. Beefered it, medium rare, probably two minutes, two minutes, and then sliced it up. And you know what? It wasn't bad. This was Canada goose come from Oklahoma. My buddy Charles went out there, and, and they had uh, brought some back from an Oklahoma hunt. And, man, it's good, so I'm looking forward to it. He's gave me a couple recipes that are just ideas of how – how they like to do it. So uh, one of them is where you cook cook it a lot like roast. Where you, um, what what they do? They do it. They do it on the crock pot. But you know me, I'm gonna do it on smoker. So they season it up and brown it kind of in a skillet, and then move it to the crock pot and cook it down to where it's fall apart. And, and it, Charles swears it tastes just like really good pot roast. You said you couldn't tell the difference. So so I'm anxious to try that on the smoker. But um, man. I hadn't I hadn't done just a ton of cooking. We did some we did some good stuff during the holidays though. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, what was your? That was actually one of the topics I was going to ask you. What was your favorite dish? The favorite thing I cooked uh, on the, on our off season. Yeah. During I'm gonna tell holidays. you, uh, Rochelle's family came to our house and spent Christmas. Her uh, brother and sister and their daughters, her mom, and we did a um, we did a meal on Christmas Eve. Yeah. And I and I went and bought the, uh, Costco and bought one of those whole beef tenderloins, and man, that was one of the that's probably the best thing I ate. I nailed it that time. I mean, yeah. you know, a lot of times beef tenderloins hard to beat, but as long as you don't cook it over, and that's always been an issue with me because I you know I'd, I'd put it on there and not probe it, just let it roll. And I mean, I, I'm pretty good at cooking them. I, I've won some awards cooking beef tenderloin, <laughs> but this time I wanted to make sure because I didn't want to impress the family and all that. So I, I double probed it. I had one probe kind of on one end, about a third of the way in, and on really? the other end I put another probe. And I watched that thing the whole time. I had it on my uh, signals, the Bluetooth was on my phone. So no matter where I went in the house, I knew what the temperature was on my beef tenderloin, Ooh. and I took it to about 122, and it was perfect. 
it was what was it? I mean, it was like the that was the best, best thing I had. That was beef best thing tenderloin I had. that that's the best pe- beef tenderloin I've ever had. And you've cooked some really good ones. I seasoned um, it a little different. I used that uh, charcoal enhanced rub I've been working on. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like. Uh, did you just put the charcoal rub? No, on? no, no. I, I mean, I, I done it up. I had a little AP like, on it. And had a little bit of that that gunpowder s kind of. It looks like gunpowder. I yeah. can't call it that, but it's it looks like gunpowder. Yeah, it's not black. It's kind of a charcoaly kind of. Yeah, I mean, it, it's gray. gray, gray. I'd say gray, but it has the color. If you if you if you know anything about black powder or reloading <laughs> reloading ammunition, it kind of had that gunpowder look to it, mm-hmm. and it's got a real. The best way I can describe it. And it's still a prototype. I hadn't perfected it. But it tastes like a ribeye steak on the grill. Yeah. Do you taste that? It you, tastes it's the like essence the, of a it's the essence of a grill. It tastes like, yeah, the out the the top layer of a ribeye steak How, that's yeah. been cooked over charcoal. Over charcoal, yeah. over charcoal fire. That's yeah. what it tastes like. And it and I did um I did that on the gateways where I did the beef tenderloin on. But that's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. So what did you cook it up? And it I mean it had amazing flavor. That was what was so yeah. good about it. It tastes like it had been grilled, even though I'd cooked it low and slow. I held it about 275, and it took, I don't know, an hour and a half, something. It wasn't long. And then I rested it for about an hour, I don't know, it was almost an hour and a half before I cut it, and that was the key. Because, you know, norm- normally you cook a, a whole beef tenderloin, one, you take it off, you may give it five, ten minutes, and then you're cutting it up. Yeah. I wrapped that jerker up, put it in a cooler, and let it sit. And, man, it held every bit of juice. And that's why, like, we had leftovers, and we were going to eat on this. We were going to make little sandwiches on Christmas yeah. Day and eat on it. So we had leftovers, but um, they were just as moist. I, mean, I was eating it cold out of the Ziploc bag yeah. out of the refrigerator. It was they still were good. good. And we served it with the um, we served it with the horseradish mayo sauce that yeah, I that, creamy horseradish sauce. Yeah, that's so sauce. good. That's so yeah. good with beef like that. And what's even better is the next day you put a roll, like one of those yeast rolls that I rose, you know. Because I, I rose the Yeah, those roads, yeah. roads. <laughs> you put it with a roll with some of that creamy sauce in the middle of it. Ooh. Yeah, that was that some was good really stuff, good. man. Well, um, so you probed one end and you probed the other end. Yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, a lot of times you just stick one in the middle. Yeah. You know, there was. It, it ran, it ran, I want to say it was four or five degrees different. And what I did was as soon as what, the first one got to 122, I went ahead and took it off. And by that time, the other one had, had come up to within two degrees. I think it was it was at least one twenty on that end. But what I noticed after that rest, it was, you know, a lot of times you'll have one end is over end towards the middle is where you're you know you're kind of towards your rare and then yeah. back towards the end. This from one end to the other was the same doneness all the way across. It was beautiful because you had a black outside, you know, because of that gunpowder. Yeah, it kind of yeah. yeah. Or it was dark. It mm-hmm. was a dark colored outside, and then it was just like one solid color of a Beautiful. pretty red. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was awesome. Yeah. So what do it, you think the rest helped give it that uniform the evenness? I yeah. think so. Yeah, I think so. It really did. Huh. It was good. Yeah. Um, your sausage balls were a big hit. Man, that recipe. <laughs> I shocked some people with that one. It was good. A lot of people. That was it souped up. I mean, sausage balls. How long have you been making sausage balls? All your life? I love sausage balls. They're like, when I think of holidays, they're one of my favorite things. It's, it's those it's, standard two cups of Bisquick, one cup of cheese, one cup of sausage. It's delicious. Well, yeah. I, that's I, the old fashioned way. They are good. Yeah. They're, you know, my whole thing with sausage balls, you got to get that ratio right. Yeah, they can get dry. I like it to have more sausage and more cheese than I do. The bread. the bready the breading yeah. mix. So I, I I that was one thing I did. I took it. I cut the bread and mix back. I added some seasoning to it. Added some peppers. Added some some greens, some herbs. Yeah. And I put what a, well, I put some uh, I put some shallot or some onion or something green onion or something. I can't. I, I don't even remember what all it was. It was so good though. And then yeah, I gotta pull it up. And, uh, you used a red pepper. You used like a Fresno. Fresno yeah, it was a Fresno pepper. And you I cooked them. Extra, you put through cream cheese in there and the sharp. Oh, that's what I forgot. The cream cheese is what made those sausage yeah. and cheese balls and because it put, ta- it takes that texture really <laughs> to another it does, level. It does. It keeps it from getting yep. dry. And it so it's not it. that old. You know, I, mean, I don't know how to explain the texture. I always say it's dry. It's like yeah. I mean, like eating you know, you're eating some press wood or something. <laughs> I mean, you know how it is. It's bready. It's like cold. Especially when when they cool off. I mean, because sausage balls are they're good at room temp, but I don't just like them to be dry. 
I want them to still have that moisture. So adding that cream cheese, the extra sausage, all that. And I use the hot so- hot and spicy sausage. Hot sausage. Um, cream cheese, the extra sharp. Use the Fresno peppers. Use dried parsley, AP, and onion powder. Do you know what uh, what, what really uh, sold those to people? Serving them with that Captain Rodney's, yeah. the dipping sauce. I mean, have you? Uh, di- I've never heard of dipping sauce yeah, for sausage. Sauce we always just, yeah, we always yeah. eat them. A lot of times it's for them. breakfast, That's but, but to me, That's they're any time, they're an any tizer, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, they ought, to, they ought to have those in the any tizer section. <laughs> they are, but they're good. That that was a good recipe. Uh, dang it, Malk. I got it. I got it. Sorry, somebody's trying to get at me. That's okay. <laughs> We're live here. I know you're supposed to have that on top. Do it. Um, that's my game good. camera, uh, my coon cam, where I get pictures of my raccoons. <laughs> that you're... Yeah. I'm going to have to say, uh, bear with me, y'all. No. It might be... It. Well, hunting season's over, so it really don't matter. I don't even know why I'm looking. She might be upset. I'm addicted. Um, I have a problem this time of year, but you know what? Not anymore. Super Bowl weekend. Yeah. And I wasn't excited about the Super Bowl. I mean, I feel like the Saints got robbed, even though... I mean, we're from Mississippi, so we kind of like the Saints. Yeah. Vikings are my team, but, you know, I, 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 as far as I, they only make it to the NFC Championship. That's my Super Bowl when they make it there. I do all my <laughs> celebrating. Hopefully before I die, the Vikings will win the Super Bowl. Or just go. Or just go. Yeah. They've been, they've been, they never won. I thought they have been four times. But I was hoping, this, I thought the Saints was the best team this year. I want to see Drew Brees get him another one. Yeah, because he's and got to retire soon. Yeah. They got the shaft. Yeah. They did. That's horrible. And yeah, so, they did. I mean, you know, I'm not excited. Brady's been there a thousand yeah. times. And I was, yeah, he's the GOAT. For, uh, maybe the young Rams can get him. I don't know. I'm really not a Rams fan. I never have liked the Rams. I like Todd Gurley. I didn't like the Rams because they beat the Titans in the Super Bowl back when the Titans went. And Kurt Warner, the Kurt Warner was the Rams quarterback. Yeah. I do remember Kurt Warner. The Titans came up short in that Super Bowl. They were right there at the goal line at the end. Yeah. But so yeah, I don't care. I don't. I don't care. But you know, I'm excited about cooking. Yeah. Well, you weren't ca- excited about it. I wasn't going to cook. Talking about yeah. it. But now, and I've, we started talking about pumped. Super Bowl recipes for this particular podcast. And well, see, that was I the lit fire. The, I didn't know it, but yeah, I did. The deal was, we were going to come back with a video this week. Um, I was going to fire up the jambo. I was going to do a brisket, and. Um, the weather didn't cooperate. Yeah. Got, we had a polar vortex take over three quarters of the whole kid. country. It was the day I wanted to film was 21 degrees here in Mississippi, and that's really cold. I mean, I, I'm glad I wasn't up north because, man, it was minus. They yeah. were, it was crazy. I was reading reports today of people freezing to death outside. Mm, that's terrible. But, yeah, so we didn't get to film. And I'm going to fire up the jam- I have been I have been cooking on the Jambo. Yeah, what I've, so, and I've been um, cooking. I've been going to Costco and getting those prime briskets and cooking them on my jambo to you know to get them down, play with it, see how it runs. It's amazing. <laughs> have I have I told you how much? Have I told you, you really how amazing like it, it is? Yeah, you, yes, it is. You, I mean, you've told me like old Jolene. She's a cooking machine. You've been cooking on it, and you've you know talked about cooking on it. But yeah, tell me about. Well, for those of you, jambo is a stick burner, so it's got you know the the. The main pipe cooking chamber, that's the big pipe. And then it's got on the end of it, it's got an offset firebox. Um, and then it's got a huge exhaust uh, pipe on the far end. And that's what makes the thing work. It's the, Jam, Jamie's got the, the diameter of that pipe figured out for the size of the grill to make the air flow through it to where... It's it supposed to bounce, right? Yeah, I mean, it does. It comes out of... He's got yeah. a little... Like a a diverter, right? Right when it comes out, you know, into the heat comes into the actual cooking chamber, yeah. and it throws the heat and air and smoke up towards the top. I think first, and then it bounces all up and down because of the draw of that pipe. That's and amazing. It, and it just co- it cooks so even. I mean, I, I was amazed at how fast it reacts. I mean, I, I barely have it open, and it wants to run. You know, two seventy five. As long as you put a stick of wood on it, about every forty five minutes to an hour. It's running. And so um, that's all I've been doing is practicing building my fire. Mm-hmm. <coughs> mm, excuse me. That's all I've been doing, practicing building my fire, finding out how often I have to put wood on it, seeing how it reacts, and then the whole time having some meat on it. So, and I, I mean, I've cooked not only brisket, I've cooked some pork bellies I had yeah, the freezer on I, it. I, I cooked a butt. Pork belly. 
Oh, you want to talk first. about? Oh, you know what? <laughs> what? You asked me the best thing I cooked, and I was thinking holidays. The pork belly might be the best thing I've ever cooked in my life. Uh, it wasn't. How many times have I said that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it really, it was that like, good. Yeah, you do say that a lot. Um, I hate food. You can tell. <laughs> we share that. Yeah. Um, so, you, okay, you cooked a couple, you've been cooking briskets. That's kind of, yep. you, you know. Well, that's, that's the first thing you cooked on it, right? You know, that's that's why I want a stick burner. Cook that brisket. See if it's better, worse, about the same what as I cooked on my old hickory. Yeah. Um, mm, I don't know if I'm going to say better yet, but it's yet. definitely as good. Yeah. And I'm working on getting it better. That's the whole goal. You know, that, that uh, one of the briskets you cooked that we ate, I guess we had it for dinner one night. Mm-hmm. Um, it was getting late and... We didn't let it rest as long as you probably would have wanted to. Oh, yeah. I bet if you let it. Two hours mm-hmm. at least. Yeah. Well, that I you know, like I, had, I hadn't done like. a butcher paper brisket yet. Yeah. And so that's what, you know, I got a little, me and Mark uh, Williams are doing a little brisket tutorial, tutorial tomorrow for one of his friends over at his house. So he's going to come get the jambo later today and pull it over there. So we're going to... Uh, do that tomorrow, and yeah. then next week I've got a couple more briskets. Hopefully, hopefully, do that video next you week. A whole case of briskets. I did. Yeah. They had them, man. Kind of- they had prime briskets. It was, was it two eighty nine a pound? If I bought them by the case, I mean, it was, I was, practically gave me the briskets. <laughs> I spent. I was less than two hundred bucks for a case of five whole packer prime briskets from Costco. I come out of there like I just stole something. <laughs> I was happy. I was like, man, because you know I pay that for one brisket a lot of times. Uh, well, I mean, a, a one good brisket. Say you go buy. I mean, I don't even think you can't get a Snake River for under two hundred bucks, mm-hmm. but you could get a uh, Creekstone Prime, and it probably by the time I got it delivered yeah, and everything, it's gonna be it's gonna be all, it's gonna mess up two hundred bucks. Yeah. Well, um, there I got five of them that are you, good, you, and uh, they had the pack date on it, so I knew I could get thirty forty five days in the refrigerator mm-hmm. because they were packed on January third. And so here we are today with first. Yeah. And I'll be at 30 days Sunday, which is, I want 30 days at minimum on them. And I've got still 15 more days before those five I need to worry about. But I know they're going to be broke down. They're going to be a little bit wet aged. I'm excited. Well, <laughs> you went, um, you know, you, you, you were shopping at Costco and I was kind of overdoing my thing. But then you said, I need to use the bathroom. Go check this out for me. So I did, and she told me what the total was, you know. And I was like, uh, I'm fixing to pay for this real quick and get out of here before she realizes <laughs> that she rang it up wrong. Yeah. Because I was like, there's no way that whole case of brisket was, was, yeah, was less that cheap? than $200. Yeah, yeah. So they, had, they had something wrong on it? No, that's <laughs> yeah. what it was. I was shocked when I saw it. I was going to tell you, like, look what we got. Because, I mean, I didn't think about it when I told the guy I wanted them. I was just, they only had two. They had two in the meat counter. And I wasn't crazy about them. You know how... Sometimes you see them and they're just not the right brisket yeah. that I wanted. And I said, "Well, I'm gonna see if they got a case and just get them, and bring them out." And they did. And man, I made out like a banshee with those. But so that's what we're gonna be doing. We gotta keep firing up that jambo and getting it down. So the pork belly. Oh, the pork belly. So, so you had to clean out your. You had to clean out the freezer because you were making room for right. uh, deer, deer meat. Deer meat. Um, yeah, three deer. <laughs> I'm about to buy another freezer. Because we're going to do barbecue season. I got to yeah. have a place to put my barbecue meat. So. I mean, we've been talking about it for a while. Yeah. We got to get another deep freeze. We can't. You're you're taking on my deep freeze space. That's so. it. Yeah. Yep. Um. So we had to clean out the freezer to make room for deer meat. You had a couple pork bellies in there that I was planning on doing some other stuff with. Yeah. That was one of those things. Where I was at Costco one day and hey, there's some pork bellies. I'll get. To, I'll use them for something. Yeah. And. I've done a recipe on them before. Normally, I do pork You've done belly. A yeah, normally I do them. You've you know, pork. kind of a pulled pork style, where you yeah. cook them until they fall apart and make sandwiches, and it's so rich and really good. It's good in vinegar. But yeah. I wanted to do it and try to get that skin crispy because people ask all the time, "How is the skin crispy? How do you get the crispy skin?" So I was like, "All right, we're going to see what this jambo does." And so. What I did, and I probably need to do, I'm not probably, I'm going to. I'm going to do a video of this one of these days. I'm going to do it again just because it's good. But I, what I did was I took the, the pork belly out of the pack, um, dried it as best I could. I'm talking about really trying to get all the moisture off of it, all off the skin. Do you even like the sit meat. out any? Oh, uh, yeah, sit out probably. By the, time, by the time I get it on the grill, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, okay. 
And so what I did, the only so season in the meat the side, the edges, the bottom, and then I put it skin up. What did you season it with? Just barbecue rub. <laughs> Frankenstein's. <laughs> you were cleaning out the <laughs> I was cleaning out. I was just going with whatever was open in there. It's like, yeah, I don't want to throw it away. I'll just use it. Use it here. Use it here. And I did, what, a two? Did I do two briskets out there or one? I think. I made it two. I don't know. And I did a pork butt and two pork bellies. And I was just using it. I didn't care what was on them. I was, I wouldn't worry about flavor. I was going for um, kind of looks, texture. That's what I was doing on all of it. I was playing to see what kind of jambo texture I would get. So I got some seasoning on the meat only, left the skin alone, so left it sitting up and sitting air it out for yeah. just a little bit. And I patted it with paper, paper towel, got all that moisture off of it. And then I put a little kosher salt and kind of spread it all over the skin. And that salt, I've, I've seen some other guys do it. It's going to draw out moisture as it cooks and it's going to make it to where the skin wants to dry out and then it's going to crackle. So that's what it's all about is getting that skin dry. So it goes on the jambo, and I put it um, not right by the firebox, but on that side, you know, left of left of the th- uh, right of the thermometer a little bit if you're facing the grill. Um, well, once again, I, I didn't, I hadn't cooked on it enough to check the rack temp to see where it is, but it's a little hotter. Closer, you know, just closer you get to that firebox, you know, it's going to be hotter. Okay. So if I had to guess, I was at the dial. I was two seventy five at rack right there. I was probably close to three hundred. If I, you know, that's, that's probably what it was. And so I had two of them on there and, um, as it cooked, all I did was watch it. I didn't do, I didn't baste it. Didn't I didn't do anything. It. Didn't probe it. Not at this point. Yeah. I didn't probe it to the very end. I, I didn't, I just knew that it had to go over yeah. pork belly. needs to go about 205 anyway to break down all that fat. So what I did was I, I just kept cooking it, putting, I was using post oak that day, uh, watching my brisket, watching my pork butt. And, um, when, when I got some really good color and that skin started really drying out and getting that gold kind of mahogany or, you know, how pork skin does, yeah. I was like, well, I don't, I want to wrap it to get, to get it tender, but I don't want to wrap the skin. But you weren't, you didn't so probe it at I, this point. No, I still didn't probe it. I didn't probe it. <laughs> I, 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 what I'm telling you is I didn't probe it. Not to the very end until I took it off. Okay. After and at that point, decided. it was done. Yeah. After I already decided. But what I did was I just kind of built me a little boat out of aluminum foil that was big enough to um, cover the pork belly on the bottom but leave the skin exposed. I set it down in there, and I tucked it in real good around the edges and on the bottom and left left the skin open. And what happened was it started pulling up all that fat up to the skin. It was liquefying. So the skin had done got, you know, started to get tight. Yeah. And then as that that fat was heating up, it was frying it. You could hear it sizzle. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. And and it started getting hard. It was was cracked. It was crunchy. It was real crunchy. And so about, I don't think it took six hours total for those pork bellies. And finally I probed them. And when I went in, it was just like crunch, you know, just slid in. I was like, <laughs> is yeah, butter with like, this, this is a, <laughs> the crunchy yeah, it's butter with a crunch. And so I pulled them out and let them rest. That's when I brought them to the cutting board. I think you were off doing something else. Yeah, working. I was working. Uh, probably shopping or something on the internet. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I let them sit there and I cut some up. And I was like, I don't know about this. Because it was crunchy, and then it was, you know, just pork belly. I said, I may have something here. <laughs> and so I, I cut it. And, I, and what I did is I just kind of cut it in chunks at that point. I crossed it. And then they could turn. Like strips. Yeah, it was like strips. Was, but they and were probably three. three the strips. And put on how big your fingers are, two or three fingers wide. Yeah. And then I come back across that and cut it into little bite-sized pieces. Yeah. And, man, so it was like the a, top would like crunch, a... and the bottom would just melt in your mouth i mean it was just delicious deli- like the best bacon out of a whole hog that you've ever had yeah and so uh, that's when i come and got you i said shell you gotta try this <laughs> and then you try that. yeah and then i didn't know that you first of all I, I was really busy that morning i didn't i knew you were cooking brisket and i know you're you know cooking and playing around but i guess i forgot that you were cooking the pork belly or didn't pay attention or whatever i didn't even know about it till i went in there and I, I tried it and i was like oh my God. It'll hurt you. I, and then I came and I said, how'd you, did you put that in the beefer? Because you talked about putting so pork belly in the So, that takes me to my next thing. <laughs> and I okay. said, not just yet, but I did. <laughs> After it cooled a lot, I let it sit there. And it had been really great, like, putting it in the refrigerator and letting it cool and then bringing it out the next yeah. morning. But, so what well, I. Well, 
So what I did was I took that chunk, and it's about, the, if anybody don't know what the beefer is, it's like this salamander, a high-heat broiler that, eh, it's probably what, the racks on those are about four by eight inches maybe. They're kind of narrow and, and about the size of a, a decent-sized steak. Yeah. That's about how big it is. Yeah. It'll fit a ribeye steak perfect. on there. Perfect. Not so a big ribeye Yeah, steak. not a big ribeye steak. Just a normal size one. Like a 16-ouncer. Yeah. So I put the pork belly on there, skin up. And stuck it in that beef for 1500 degrees and on not, not up high, not right on it. Cause I knew it burn it in an instant. I did it about three quarters of the way down. Probably. I don't know did what. Did you find out that it would burn it in an instant? No, I knew it would. <laughs> <laughs> Through trial and error. Yeah, I knew it would. <laughs> so that's when, um, man, it just started like, if anybody's fried pork rinds, <laughs> that's what it started doing all the way across the top of it. It just kind of poofed it. And you can watch it in that beef. I kind of I need to get a video. That'd be a cool video. Yeah, of the poor of that. Right. Yeah, just watching it kind of poof up. and bubble all along the top of it. And that one, when I brought it back in, I mixed up that little Asian dipping sauce. Yeah. With, so, uh, what was it? Soy sauce, little hoisin, little gochujang, little chili Thai chili, yeah. a little honey. And man, I whisked all that up and was dipping that pork belly with a crunch in that. Let me it tell you. Let me tell you. I hurt myself. That was, yeah. <laughs> like, I put you in a meat coma. Yeah, it did. Uh, it, it was, because you eat one and, and it's so, you know, the salt that you put on the top, yeah. you know, to get it dry, it, it had a real saltiness to it, but it was, oh, that was good. It was, it was crunchy. I gave a salt. bunch of that away and everybody was like, what'd you do? Because <laughs> yeah, what I did is I, I, I cut it in those chunks and wrapped it up in full and I was like, all right, here you go. Here's what you do. Unwrap it, put it in like a casserole dish, put it in the oven, 350, about 20 minutes so it get warm. Then cut your broiler on and move it up and let that broiler, I mean, you know, your oven broiler is not going to get that high. Yeah. I imagine it's 500 something degrees, but It'll, but it still it still did it because I, yeah. I did some the next day too, just see what it do, man. It was good. It was good. That so, was on point. So that's a recipe you're going to be adding. To yeah, that's probably one I'll probably have to do. Yeah. I love the Asian dipping sauce, and you just kind of threw that together. Oh, yeah, I could make that better. That was just yeah. something I was like, well, we got in the fridge, okay. But it went so this. good with the pork belly. Oh, I know why they, you know, I've seen a lot of videos of those. Uh, Asian pork belly, yeah. Yeah, and the crispy Asian pork belly where they'll do it, and they'll, they'll put it in the oil, and they fry the, you know, pour the oil over it and let oh, it crackle gosh, that way. Yeah. Well, this, we just use high heat to do that. I was wondering if, like, a torture. What's the uh, the loof lighter? Maybe that hot <laughs> air. I've got. I'm gonna do some experimenting on that. You gonna get Mark over here? Mm-hmm. Um, Pardon me, I'm thirsty. So it's not whiskey, I promise. It's just water enhanced with what? peach grape flavoring. So I'm gonna save my drink uh, cards for Sunday. <laughs> that's what you're yeah, doing. That's what I'm doing. I'm, drink, I'm saving my drink points this week. It's water till Sunday. I don't keep up with my drink points like I should. And then beer. Oh, man, beer's going to be so good. So what? A, let's talk about, um, well, the main topic I wanted to talk about this week was cooking in cold weather. Cold weather cooking. Cold what, weather I, cooking. I, I hate doing it. No, I mean, you know, it's different. It's, I mean, because, A, I mean, the weather's going to slow things down a little bit. Your cooker's going to be take longer to come up to temp. You're going to burn a little more fuel. Um, if the wind's blowing, you got to worry about shielding the wind off. You know, getting position. I, what I always do is try to position it on the side of the house or wherever I'm at. That's kind of got a shield. If you don't, you can build. You've seen those guys. They kind of got these. Oh. Wo- they'll use plywood or they'll use tin. Kind of make like a a little barrier around yeah. it to shield it. Especially um, like if you're using like a, a a bullet, like a Weber Smoky Mount. Yeah, or yeah, a WSM drum or drum. Or yeah, something. exactly. Um, you can. I've, actually, if you go to AmazingRibs.com, he has a whole page of it's people that have created these things. That's good tips. Yeah, and and, and created it at home. You know, backyard guys have just created this. You know, for their own part. You know, yeah, their own ingenuity. I mean, you know, some of the cookers we use are, but they're great ideas there at AmazingRibs.com. <coughs> Hmm. <coughs> I might do a little editing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. You can't edit it? I got choked up, Shell. Get you some more of that. Yeah, pizza water. Maybe pizza that's water. what's choking me up. I need some of that. What are you drinking? But anyway, yeah, amazing. That's 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 uh, some really good tips on how to, to shield your cookers. Yeah. Because, that, I mean, 
Some of some, the ones we use, you know, the, the more expensive cookers are insulated or whatever. The weather doesn't affect them as much. But your drums or your WSMs or some of the, you know, some of the pellet grills even, uh, gas grills, all those, cold weather and wind, man, it makes it's a challenge. Yeah. Stick burners. A lot of times stick burners, you got to go with where the wind's drafting because it's going to pull. Yeah. Either it's blowing too much air, forcing too much air in, or it's pulling too much air across your stack. So... Those drafts and cold drafts really change it, and, and uh, it's something you need to be aware of. Um, what I do is just give myself extra time. Yeah. Always. I mean, because, you know, you can always rest. Well, what, where, at what point does temperatures become too, you know, where it's really going to affect you? I don't know. 40s, I mean, and here, 30s, here, where we, here where we are, we don't get that cold. I mean, yeah. you know, it's rare. Like this week, polar, polar vortex. It dropped down and it was, it was freezing. Well, I wasn't going out there and cooking. I mean, yeah. but there's guys. That, man, I saw. I, you know, I follow people They're on Facebook. They were digging. They were digging snow out and cooking. And you know, if I, I need to. I need to get somebody and ask them. Man, how's that? You know, what's that cold weather do? Yeah. Especially, I mean, what if it's cold weather and altitude? It really slowed things down. Wow. But um, one thing you can do to insulate right. your cookers is use moving blankets or you know some grill Welding companies. Blankets. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you, you don't don't fire. don't use anything that's gonna catch, catch on fire. Yeah. yeah, I've seen people use it. You know, I've seen them take a stick burner and throw a wool blanket on it. Yeah, but but you know, it's anything that can trap some heat in. It. Yeah, don't don't tell nobody. I tell you, if your house burns down, because you... <laughs> no, but um, on the competition trail, it's common to say that. Yeah. Oh yeah. With those, uh, some some uh, grill manufacturers actually make like an insulated cover. Yeah. I, know, I think Yoder does for their pellet grills. It, it's almost. Reminds me of a horse blanket. You seen those things, like the blankets yeah, they put on exactly. horses to keep them warm? Yeah. It's kind of fitted and heavy. Yeah. That's what it looks like and to me. And it's like got holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, I mean, you know, it works. It traps the heat in. Mm-hmm. Um, it just adds that extra insulation. Yeah. But the biggest thing is, it's cold outside. Know that it's going to take you longer. You're going to fight it a little more. You're going to burn a little more coal. Um, if you need water or anything, make sure your water hoses aren't froze. <laughs> I've had that happen before. You know, you laugh at me, but... Uh, we were we were cooking contests and we we're stretching our hoses out to run to the spigot, and it's so cold that they froze. And you can't if you're using like a backwoods or something's a water cooker. Yeah, you, you're not gonna get water. We would have to go down there and put a little leaf blower, you know, uh, weed burner close to it just to kind of heat the hose up and squish the ice out <laughs> to get the water flow. And then as long as you left it trickling, it would yeah, do it. But, you know, it a lot of times. Your uh, even your like our you know our hose bibs on our houses we we uh, winter proof them you know yeah. they've got all the insulation packed around them a little cover on them so I can't even get to those in the winter. Um, best advice is don't cook in the day I'm cold. No. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta cook. Hey, you gotta cook. Yeah, you gotta I mean, cook. We are in Mississippi, yeah. and that makes a big difference because we don't get those temperatures. But, yeah. yeah, for guys that do, man, I feel for y'all. Yeah. I mean, it does take some. Maybe, maybe somebody's got some comments they can send us in and tell you're us. Saying what, you're not the authority. On I'm not the. I'm not. I, hey, I'm not going to lie. That's why. I, I, if you want to ask me how to sit in the deer stand in cold weather, <laughs> I can bundle up. I can put some warm socks on. Get me some thousand insulated boots and and some coveralls and toboggans and hot hands and a buddy heater if I have to. And I can tell you how to prepare for that. But well, you know, like cooking on Christmas. It was, it was 70 degrees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, we so had cold. we had a very, very mild winter here. But here, right before it's time to start back cooking, it's gotten cold. Yeah. Uh, climate shift. I don't believe climate change. I believe in climate shift. <laughs> Stay cold. Our cold weather should have been here in November, but it didn't come till end of January. We got really cold in November. And then it got really warm in December. Yeah. And then it's getting Who colder. Knows? Anyway. Memphis, or where we're at, it's one of those places where if you don't so, like the weather, stick around because it's going to yeah. change. Today, it was 68 degrees. It was beautiful today. Tomorrow, brisket, uh, the little brisket thing we're going to do, it's going to be 68 degrees. Is it? That's good. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm, um, cold's got me. So, I lost my sheet of paper. Um, so, let's talk about Super Bowl. Everybody's gearing up for Super Bowl. We've got a ton of, well. Where are we going to watch it? We're going to Rodney's? Yeah. Okay, here's what I'm cooking. I've already nailed it down. I've okay. nailed it down what I'm cooking. What are you cooking for Super Bowl? I'm doing some sausages and some bologna. Okay. So I can do like a sausage and sausage bologna, and bologna board. board. Okay. Got to have it. And cheese. But smoke bologna. I'm going to score it. I'm going to season it up. Put it on the smoker. 
and glaze it at the end so it'll be beautiful. It's going to be awesome. I've been wanting some smoked bologna. Never for a while. tried smoked bologna. Don't oh, knock good. it. Don't knock try it. I, we got, went... I, have some, I have some deer sausage yeah. that I've got the smoked sausage already. I've got two kinds of that jalapeno and cheese. Actually, I got three kinds. I have a uh, a You've pineapple, got pineapple and uh, pork. Yeah. Pork and pineapple? Is that no, what it no, is? it's brown sugar pineapple. Uh, but is it pork? No, it's not pork. It's beef? It's deer. Oh. But I have some pork, too. I was talking about the country pleasant. Oh, I already cooked that. Oh, I both? cooked that okay. the other day. Yeah, okay. that's, if y'all haven't tried this uh, brown sugar pineapple smoked sausage that, that people okay. are doing now, the country pleasant, you can get it out of Florence, Mississippi. They have one that's, that you can, we and bought it at Walmart. they distribute to Kroger and Walmart. Yeah, we lovely. bought it at our Walmart in Hernando. It's awesome. It's, it has, and you know why I think that, so they, so they do a venison sausage with it. And, I don't know. I'm just speculating totally on this. I know the pineapple goes with pork sausage or whatever, but it doesn't really have a pineapple taste. It has a sweet taste. I think what they're doing, the reason why those uh, processors started doing it is because pineapple, the bromine in it, naturally breaks down meat. It's a tenderizer. A lot of meat tenderizers made out of that. It's the same thing as yes. made out of pineapple. They're putting that in with the deer meat and adding fat to it, and it's breaking that. It's tenderizing that deer from inside. Mm-hmm. And so it's, you get a juicier, tender sausage. So I'm cooking sense. some of that. Yeah. Cooking some of that. I'm going to do, um, I'm not doing ribs. Yeah, we uh, can't do. Yeah, I'm not doing ribs. Probably going to do some chicken wings. I got to do some wings for the Super Bowl. Yep. Um, well, Rodney's doing her wings. Yeah, but I think I might do some too. <laughs> just a few. Just because I, I got a new jerk season I've been toying with. I want to. Do some jerk. Just let me have my jerk wings, Cheryl. Okay. Let me have my jerk wings. Do whatever. And then I'm going to do the sausage and cheese happy. balls. Again, really? I'm going to take some of those. Okay. And then I, I was thinking do... fried some pork skin, pork rinds. Okay. And then maybe maybe you'll whip up some pimento cheese. White pimento cheese? White, yeah, the white, white jalapeno, jalapeno pimento, pimento cheese. cheese. If, you'll, if you'll whip that up, that's going to be our Super Bowl. Doesn't that sound good? Thank you. It's simple. You, you told me oh, no. But. I'm going to do a butt because I've already bought the butt. It's in the fridge. And I already bought the nacho cheese. Oh, you're uh, barbecue nachos, baby. <laughs> oh, I bet that made a loud pop. I'm sorry, guys, on that microphone. I got excited about them barbecue nachos. Barbecue nachos. I right. bought the jalapeno. I forgot. I've already got the jalapenos. We got a... Five gallons of cheese. Is it five gallons? No, it's, <laughs> it's not five can. gallons. No, it's, it's, not a, my... it's like it's the prison can. can. Yeah. <laughs> Do they serve nacho cheese to prisoners? I don't know. Oh, it's, okay. well, not, not to prisoners. It's kind of you'd serve it like the... It's institutional. Yeah. At the, if you're going to the concession stand and get nachos, yeah, is that yeah. kind of nacho cheese? What you do is you open the can, you pour it in a crock, crock pot. pot, you add a touch of milk or cream. Set it down just yeah, a touch. Just a touch. Get it warm, and it'll sit there all day. So we're going to go tortilla chips. Yeah, okay. So how do you build your barbecue nachos? Tortilla, tortilla chips and then the nacho cheese, just like a nacho. Yeah. Then top it with the, the pulled pork. Yes. Then a little sauce on the pulled pork. Yes. Then a little dry rub. Yes. And then some jalapenos. Okay. That's my perfect barbecue nacho. Monte. Because there's some people that'll do chips, meat, meat, and then cheese. And then sauce, and then it's all. Yeah. But yeah, then no, you, you can't gotta, see gotta, the gotta meat. build it. Yeah. I, like the, I like to see the meat. And, right. You know. It's so good. Oh, they're, they're the best. So Especially good. if you got some good cheese and some fresh chips and some really good pulled pork. And, and you know what sauce. else? Oh, man. I'm just going to do those sliders. Jerk pork sliders. Yeah, That's I might have to. About. So Rodney's doing wings, right? I may I may skip the jerk wings. I may do the jerk. I can use my jerk seasoning on the pork tenderloins. There you go. And then I'll do the jerk pork slider. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take a little Hawaiian. i got a recipe on it. Yeah, it's on the website. <laughs> yeah. So tell, what, tell me what it is. If, if I can remember right. I'm going to go to the uh, website and pull up football food. Seared all. I probably seared off and reverse seared kind of those little pork tenderloins. <laughs> Uh, made a little slaw to go with it. Yes. And put them on. Did I do any kind of sauce? Did I make a jerk sauce to serve them with? You glazed it with a jerk sauce. That's it. And they're so simple to do. It doesn't take long. Look at that picture. Isn't that a beautiful picture right there? I like that. Man, those look good. What did I do? Is that the slaw where I did the mango and the pineapple? Mm-hmm. And a little bit of, did I put some um, pepper in it? So you did a jerk seasoning. Mm-hmm. But that's what kinda, I've been working yeah, on. I've that's been what wor- you're kind of working on like yeah. for bottling. Um, we'll call and it then you did a jam and jerk, a glaze, um, and then you cut them up yep, and yep. served them with a 
Looks like it does on the egg, maybe. Or no, the Caribbean drink. coleslaw. That's it. I'm doing that recipe right there for Super Bowl. It's going to do it on the little good. Hawaiian rolls. Mm-hmm. We'll make a platter of those already assembled. And, you know, that's a really good recipe to serve because it's grab pork and go. tenderloins or, you know, you could, we'll feed a lot of people. Um, pork, pork tenderloins will feed, feed a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, they got a lot. I think, what, three or four of them? They usually come in a double pack. So if I buy two packs, that's gonna make a lot of little sandwiches. Yeah. And then And then a bag of coleslaw mix and you know the I'll probably I don't know, I may have used fresh pineapple. I'm gonna use canned pineapple and maybe a little mango. I may omit the I mango. I don't think I don't you know. um put any pineapple in that recipe. Well, I might substitute out the mango for pineapple then. Yeah, because you have uh fresh mango. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna substitute I'm gonna, I'm gonna substitute I'm gonna <laughs> oh, make it easy. I'm gonna make it easy pineapple slaw. Same same kind of deal. <laughs> It'll still have that Caribbean uh vibe. So we'll have that going for us, the bologna, the smoked sausage, several different kinds. I need some cheese to go with that. I need a little bit of pimento cheese because I'm going to fry up a bunch of pork rinds. And then we're going to have those little sliders. <laughs> that sounds like a Super Bowl feast. It is. If, if the Vikings were there, it would be perfect. <laughs> Matt, there's always next year. Well, um. What else? Is that, I mean, is well, so, okay, that's what you're cooking. But so we were going to talk about some ideas for Super Bowl recipes. And on your website, you have like a whole football food section. I talked about this is what, uh, while I was out of town or, uh, the past couple of days, I had a radio show I did today. Yeah. And that's what we talked about. So Super what'd, Bowl you, food. what'd you tell him? Well, it was JT. JT, he wanted to talk moink balls. Exactly what those were. You know, everybody knows it's a meatball that you wrap in bacon and you season it up, put the rub on it, smoke it to the bacon's kind of brown, and then glaze it with a sauce and get it all sticky sweet. It's the ultimate football food. Anything that anything you can stick with a toothpick, you can put mm-hmm. on a platter and go by and grab and eat. You know, one hand's holding the plate, and one hand's doing the eating with the toothpick. <laughs> That's perfect. Super. Or one That's, hand's drinking. One, yeah, yeah. You might need a table because we got a beer plate, <laughs> one hand to eat with, and there you go. That's football food. And so we talked about those. We talked about the little chicken roll ups. The where I did the brown sugar chicken bites. It was thighs that we seasoned up and wrapped in thin bacon, and then I sprinkled the rub and brown sugar over them so they caramelized. It's a l- another little bite. Yeah. I talked about the sausage balls. <laughs> I thought, I mean, those were good. Um, let's see, you know, the pulled chicken pork. Bites. Did you talk about the little chicken that's, bites? Yeah, that yeah. was the chicken okay. bites, the thighs that we did like that. We did talked you? about wings. Um, what I like about doing chicken, I mean, who don't like hot wings? Yeah. But what I like is, I mean, I do them all on the grill. Always run the temp up. I mean, I'm a whole wing guy. I just like them because I think the size of them's bigger. Sometimes you buy party wings and you get these little bitty party nubs. Wing, yeah. of, of, and I mean, the party, they're party okay. Wings feed a lot of people. Yeah, and they're they're probably a little bit better for you at the party yeah. than the whole wings. If it's just me, and, you know, if you're having a small us and a couple party, of people, yeah. let's do whole wings. But for party wings, go ahead and get you two or three bags of them party wings and do them. But do them different ways. And what I like to do is get them dry as possible. They got to be thaw. You got to let them thaw out, so you got some time there. And then spread them out in a pan on paper towel and get them dry as possible, and then season them. And I use I like to just use AP. Mm-hmm. That's my first thing that I do to them. That's when I get some just seasoning kind on of them. Salt, pepper, garlic, or yeah. just an all purpose. Put them in the grill on high heat. And I, I mean, when I'm cooking when wings, I like three seventy five, the- four hundred so for wings. When you say grill high heat, are you talking direct, indirect? Are you mm-hmm. smoking? Uh, Anyway, yeah, I just cook the chicken wings at a higher heat. I like the vortex; it gets some crispy. It's super That's, high heat. Yeah. But the only thing bad about it is you can only Put do so many. Space, so, yeah. so what I've been doing is running them on like the Memphis pellet grill, the Traeger pellet grill, three seventy five. You know those pe- pellet grills do. They some, do some really good wings. Yeah. So you can do them on anything. Do you think the heat? Gets the skin crispy. Yeah, that's what that's running it up that like that, and no, the air moving through the air, it. Yeah, the air moving through it and yeah. the heat. Where you're not getting that on necessarily mm. a, like the drum, or, right? Yeah. I mean, if you do, you can do great wings on the drum. Yeah, um, a lot of. I mean, I'm not going. I want a little smoke flavor, but I'm not trying to make smoky, smoky, smoky chicken. Yeah. I'm going for more of a, a grilled buff, a grilled wing that you would get at Buffalo Wild Wings or somewhere like that. And so what I do once we get them cooked. That's where I make my different sauces and get all the flavor from. Uh, of course, I'll do the traditional buffalo. I'll do jerk. I'll do an Asian style. I like um, the garlic parm. All these are sauces that you can mix up, toss those wings in. If you want to set them, put them right back on the grills, lock that in. And then what I like to do is have a little extra because I like them kind of wet. Yeah. That's just, I mean, that's, that's my style of chicken wing. 
And so all of a sudden I took all these, you know, wings and I've got four or five different things to try off With one protein. One yeah, yeah, one protein. And, only, and it's super easy. And you've cooked them just one way. And at yeah. the end, you. Now, if I'm going for a flavor. barbecue wing, I will go ahead and add the barbecue rub and leave those dry. I like a good dry, like a dry barbecue me wing. Too. Me too. But it's, I don't get hung up. Oh, I need to smoke these at two twenty five, and then they need to, you know, need to crank it up. No, I will run them the whole time at a higher heat. Get them done. Yep, get them done. Especially when cooking for the masses like that. Yeah. I mean, that's just—they're so good, so good. Um, so chicken wings, and, and you fried some chicken wings when you did your oh, fantasy yeah. football party. You did. Oh, I some broke out the fryer. Fried. Yeah. yeah. I did some grilled, some some pellet grilled, some fried, deep but that fried. Was, I didn't bread them. I just deep fried them. Yeah. yeah. Well, you did some breaded and some not breaded. You had six different styles, and you did them all different ways. Man, some of them you grilled, cook, some of them you smoked, some of them you fried. Cooking full that day. We did six different types of chicken wings, and well, you did do party wings for those. Yeah. Yeah, and then ribs. Ribs. You did sausage. enough ribs for everyone to have half a slab. Yeah. <laughs> and then we did, you know, our sausage, sausage and cheese, cheese. With the bologna. Yeah. And we did uh, dips. We did two dips. One of the dips cheese. is that uh, cheesy jalapeno skillet dip. Now that's a football food that right there. That is a football food. If you like it's hot really dips, easy. like heated dips, that one's the Those way to are go. My favorite. Yeah. The, yeah, the seafood one was good. The, yeah, the shrimp dip where I, where I sauteed the shrimp and then dip with the cheese yeah. skillet in a skillet. That was good. The cheesy jalapeno skillet. I talked about that. Favorite. Yeah, I talked about those today. I told JT my favorite. You know what my favorite hot dip is. What, buffalo chicken dip? Buffalo. But, but when you're doing wings, you don't really need the buffalo chicken yeah. dip. Yeah. Do you know Hooters has that on the menu now? Really? You can go there that and get that. Me. It's really popular. Yeah. You know? I remember it's a few awesome. years ago, it was like, have you tried this yeah. dip? Have yeah. you heard it, of have you, ever, have you seen, you remember when it came out? It was like, get a big can of, of chicken. Yes. Don't, canned don't chicken. Don't use canned chicken. And, and, uh, Please don't use canned ranch chicken. Ranch dressing, out of the craft ranch dressing no. and, and, and cheese and mix it up and that's it. And what, hot sauce. Whatever you do, do not use canned chicken in that no. recipe. Hey, Smoke no. a chicken. Put it in the oven. Anything. anything. Boil it. Do not yeah. use canned chicken. I have before gotten chicken tenderloins, seasoned them really good. And roasted them in the oven. Do you remember that party we went to where somebody brought that and they didn't cook it? They and they just they just mixed it all together and brought it and set it out. And somebody I said, was like, "Ooh, buffalo chicken dip." I was like, "Chill, I don't think you want that." <laughs> Has it been cooked? And I guarantee you that was canned chicken. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. So you got you got burgers on this recipe, and that's a great. You know, if you're cooking for a handful of yeah, people, yeah, I can. I skipped the burgers on Super Bowl party. Yeah. I'll go that's for more, brats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's a better choice because you can you can fill your grill up with them. You know, you can simmer them in the beer bath and the onions stay first. Warm. Stay warm and grill them off. And then the bacon jam. Hey, that's what I was going to say. Bacon jam. That's where it's at. Brats are just right. You know, they're brats. Yeah. But if you put a bacon jam with it, you give it some. It, it makes it special. There's all you can. It's you, can you cannot go wrong with a sausage on a bun. Whether you go bacon jam or you go peppers, onions, grainy mustard, I'll even give you some mayo on it, Shell. That's some, <laughs> <laughs> can't go season. Can't be season one without mentioning Shell's mayo. It's season two. You know, I started to get you a blue pet mayonnaise shirt for Christmas, but I couldn't find anybody to make it for me. <laughs> you found my phone that day, and he's like, "Why? Why do you have a picture of blue pet?" <laughs> it's like, do you remember that? I thought you were making fun, gonna make fun of me some kind of way. Uh, no, I should have to make you. I should have still done. It. Maybe that'll be your Valentine's gift. <laughs> uh, would you wear it on the podcast if I get you a blue it's plate like, shirt? It'll be a heart. Around you know, we don't have any sponsors for our. <laughs> maybe we can get blue plate mayonnaise to be a sponsor for our podcast. I would hang that up back here. And we'd, I guarantee you, I would mention this episode is brought to you by blue plate mayonnaise. It's shells. Not only <laughs> not only is it great mayonnaise, it's Shell local. personally loves it. It's New Orleans. Yeah, it's southern. I bet you they're probably protesting the Super Bowl. Oh, I'm sure. Did you hear that all the, the bars down there and they're not gonna they're, they're boycotting? They're not That's gonna great. play. They're gonna play Super Bowl twenty ten yeah. when the Saints win instead of instead of showing the live Super Bowl. They got robbed. I mean, oh, I don't know if they would have won it. I don't know if they would have you know yeah made a showing at the Super Bowl. But I'm excited the- about Super Bowl now. I'm not. Uh, I hopefully, hopefully we get to buy some squares. Yeah. I need to, you know what I need to do? I need to ride down to Tunica. Buy you a ticket. No, and place a bet. Who do oh, you, yeah. who do you think we should bet on? I'm going to leave that one up to hmm, you. Maybe that's a coin flip. 
I don't know. I think the money's on the Patriots. I think it was it was close to even, or a, a point or two. But I think it's went I'd up where the, the Patriots. Patriots I mean, I'd, you know, I'd take the Patriots. It's hard to bet against the goat. Yeah. Bill Belichick. Belichick. Yeah, that's tough. Um, chili. Chili's, Chili's a, a good one. Great. That's a real good recipe for Super Bowl. I've taken especially Chili especially when to it's a cold. Super Bowl party yeah. Before and it was the uh, smoked brisket chili. That's mm-hmm. a, you know. You might want to tone it down I think you a little. Smoke chuck, smoke chuck roast chili. Eh, I, I, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you, you can, can use whatever meat. You can use yeah. ground beef. Uh, white chicken chili is one of my favorites. Yeah. But what? But okay, here's the deal. If you if you do my recipe, it's kind of it's more of a guy chili. Yeah. If you're taking it's it more to somewhere, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you're taking that somewhere where there's going to be women and children involved, you might want to tone the spice down. Let that be optional, or warn everybody that it's five alarm style chili. Yeah, it's. I mean. It's a good. It's not hot to me. Yeah. yeah. When you put the sour cream and the cheese and all that with yeah. it, it makes it really good. But in the, in chili, the, you can turn into a bar. You can get a lot of things out of chili because you make a really good chili, and you have chili, and then you have Fritos, and you have cheese, and you dogs? have hot dogs. Yeah. And you know, you put a little sour cream, and you know, you put a few toppings out there, and it really it it stretches really far mm. and makes it feel like you've got a lot of different options. I'm feeling it. Tacos. Taco bar. Taco bar. I love a good taco bar. Hard to go wrong. You know, I got uh, I bought some uh, skirt steak and some flank steak today. Really? And Where so at? I stopped at a a butcher shop. I never heard of it down in Gluckstadt, Mississippi. It was called Remington Farms. Okay. Um, I've never been to Gluckstadt. Gluckstadt or Gluckstadt? Yeah, is that how you say it? It's right <laughs> right in the north of, of Madison. Yeah. Uh, on the way back from that trade show I went to, and. Um, Charles had told me about it. He's like, man, you want to stop in there and see what they have? And I was like, sure. And th- it was kind of my dream store. It was just, really? it was just coolers and deep freezes and just packed with beef and some pork. Mainly beef, though. I think they're mainly a cattle farm. I looked at the pork. Uh, the ribs look. They had some really good looking uh, spare ribs. So Charles actually bought some slabs of them. But I went for the beef, and I was just looking did for y'all something. Have coolers, or did you just risk it? I bought a cooler because we bought some sausage. Oh really? At the store. <laughs> We went on a meat buying spree. <laughs> <laughs> I had to bring some stuff back. I figured I'd cook some for Super Bowl. Yeah, you got a lot on your plate this weekend. Yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You also up. smoke French dip sandwich. Eh, that's not really for me. So, I mean, you could do that for Super Bowl. But it's hard to do that one for a lot, a lot of people. That's true, that's true. When I think I, of Super Bowl, you got to think plates that you can get. When a I lot think- of small things on. Oh, that's you know, that's what I go for. Yeah. Um, when you go to when you go to a party or whatever, yeah. you don't want like one focal. I I, I don't think so. One focal thing. Uh-huh. Like you just want to be able to uh, several to really good little things. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's easier to cook for all those people. You know. That's true. Pulled I mean, pork. Yeah. Oh, that's a that's, that's a go to. That's another one, kind of like chili. Yeah. It's a good anchor. You can get sandwiches out of it. Um, barbecue nachos. That's what I'm going for. The nachos. Yeah. But yeah, you can do a lot with that. Yeah, you you know Instead I've even used bar. I've even used the pulled pork in chili before. It works. Really? Yeah, you can add it to pulled it. Pulled add pork brisket. Chili. Yep. Yeah, it's good. Well, do you use beef and pork? Or? You can. Yeah. yeah, just whatever. You can make whatever Brunswick stew. Um, you did one recipe and was the pineapple pork kebabs where you mm-hmm. cut up pine you know pork and did pineapple on a kebab. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, those are, that could be a football food. Football explosion. Yeah, that to me is more of a smaller. I don't know if I would do that true. for a huge group. Yeah, well, I mean, what, what, what do you call smaller. a huge group? I call it more than eight people, big group. Yeah, that's what I call a huge group too. If I, it's three counting. or four of us, football explosion is great. Yeah, I mean, you the know, kids, they're not gonna eat that. Yeah, you gotta have some hot dogs or something for the kid. Yeah, Always that pretty much that, that's you know my favorites. Sausage and cheese plate. That's, that's you just gotta have given. that. Got to. Everybody. And you know, there was one recipe you did that was really good where you wrapped a thin bacon around a smoked sausage and then cooked Those it are, off. Man, brat, you know, I've done some brats that way too, where you bacon wrap brat there. That's good too. Um, what I was going to say, uh, what about those bacon wrap pickles? I hadn't tried that yet. I haven't tried that either. You think that'd be a good Super Bowl something? You think it'd freak people out? No. Mark Ma- Ma- Lambert, people. they do it. He they do it a lot at the OBR uh, over Test a, Kitchen yeah. over over in Bahia. Sweet Scott mine. Scott Guy, he, he he told me he was cooking them every week. <laughs> but I think they're <laughs> using Mark's. 
on the red box. Uh, okay, so red, they're but it's a uh, Lambert's. Uh, he's you know how he does those deals, the spears. They just take them and wrap them and bake them and put them on there. Yeah, I don't know if they have the water paint in them or not. I need to text or maybe some. Yeah, see what that is. I'm gonna try. I yeah. thought I might do that. Well, That'd be something different. But I guarantee you nobody, nobody over there's probably tried the recipe that. Um, you know that go good. I like to serve pickle spears with my sausage and cheese board. Mm-hmm. What if he just busted out the bacon wrapped pickles on the sausage and cheese board? It's, like- it's too much. You're not known for doing too much. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, now I, that's one thing I did over the Christmas holidays um, that was really good. I did a really, a really cool charcuterie board. Yeah, you did. And that I didn't cook a thing on that. That was all stuff I'd bought at Costco or Sam's. Yeah. And if you follow or us on Kroger. Instagram, you can go back and look at that board. And I thought that was might be the best. So that might be the best sausage board I've ever made. Yeah. <laughs> it looked cool. It was pretty awesome. And it was only a four. Like I think. Well, it was pretty big. It was sixteen people. It yeah. was eight couples. Yeah, that we had, had a dinner party. So this was back right before Christmas, like right? yeah. around was it around the fifteenth of December yeah. or something like that? Right in there, a couple of weeks before Christmas, and we had a, a Christmas party here. Dinner and party. we did lasagna night or mm-hmm. dinner, uh, it was Italian. Italian night. I did a lasagna. Played Dirty Santa. Yeah, uh, a spinach gratin that and was good. a chicken mushroom Alfredo bake. Is yeah. what I was calling it. It was, that was. One of those recipes that I tried for the first time. You always warn me, don't try recipes oh, for, in front of people <laughs> when you serve it. But I did that one, and it that one turned yeah. out. That one was a on my list of some good of the best stuff. stuff that we did over the holidays. It was, but really that's good. been our off season. Yeah, we've made it through the holidays. So what you got coming up? We talked about um, Super Bowl. We're excited. Seventeenth, first SCA cook that we're probably going to do. Yeah. Uh, Memphis, well. Memphis Barbecue Supply. Jimmy Shotwell's hosting it. Everybody gets signed up. It's going to be on a Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Uh, I think the store's closed on Sunday. Probably why he's doing why? it. I don't know for sure if it's the store's closed on Sunday, but I imagine it probably is. Um, we're planning on cooking that one. The week after that, we're going to cook one in the Bahamas, Green Turtle Key. Uh, Grill Greats is sponsoring that one, and yeah. I'm excited. Are you excited about going to the Bahamas? I was really excited. Do you know they have – Then uh, I started getting nervous. Cause you gotta fly. Uh, yeah, and leave the kid and the whole nine yards. And the dog and the... yeah, it's just. What's going to the Bahamas? Active. And then I'm, but then I decided I'm gonna, 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 I'm gonna go and I'm gonna swim. Have are a we good gonna, time. Are you gonna get in the water with those pigs <laughs> at Pig Beach? <laughs> One day they're gonna take like a little cruise over to the Pig Beach, and they've got. I don't know if they're wild. Are they wild pigs or domestic pigs that just live there on the beach? I but think they're wild pigs that have gotten used to people. Yeah, and because the, they feed them. And yeah, stuff. and the water is like crystal clear blue, and apparently pigs love to swim. I didn't know that, mm-hmm. but you can get in the water with. Them. I don't know if I'm going to do that. They might. Th- I am. I'll, I'll do it for you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Pigs. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they're supposed to have a lot of lobster, so I'm hoping they change my I'm mind. Down, on you know, I want to go for some conch. Conk. Conk yeah. fritters. Conk, conk so salad. Yeah. It reminds me of calamari a lot. I like I don't mind the texture of it. I mean, yeah. I don't, you don't want it if it's, if it's done rubber right, band. Yeah. But you know, I'm good. not a big fan of lobster. Every time I've, I mean, I didn't grow up eating a lot of lobster. In you Florence, know? Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> and there's been a lot of rich people food that I'm like, I like this. But lobster is one of those that I don't know if I've always had it overcooked. Man, you or, can make some lobster and some butter. I'm, whew. I've just never had a really yeah. great lobster, you know? Yeah. Crab legs. Uh, you like the, crab legs better? Oh, I love crab legs, yeah. yeah. I've I'm never had a lobster that's that texture. It's always overcooked or fried. You it's know? hard to do them, yeah. yeah. You know where we need to go. We need to, we need to see if we can uh, but it's supposed to be lobster fi- take a trip up to uh, Maine, up in that area, east, Upper East Coast, and do lobster season up there and go to lobster roll. I'm that all about good? that. I think you would like lobster rolls. You know why? <laughs> Brought to you by Blue Plate. <laughs> We're going to work this sponsorship. <laughs> I like this. Yeah, you like that? Do you know what I'm <laughs> spending on Blue Plate alone? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just send us some bottles. But yeah, so that's, that's we got that coming up. Uh, March, our schedule's filling up. Mm-hmm. Um, we got some good guests coming um, to do the podcast and do some videos. We got Cosmo. Yeah. Yep, Dar- Darian's coming. He's supposed to be, we'll he's supposed to be coming in a week there. or so. Yeah. Um, we got the beefer guys. The beefer guys are coming in March. We're gonna be we're gonna do something with those guys and be cooking on that thing. 
I'm hoping to talk rubs and maybe sauces yeah. with uh, uh, Shane Townsend. Hopefully he can get, he can make Lynn. that. Shane Lynn from Townsend Spice. Yeah. yeah. Hoping he can make it over, and it's gonna be. We got some good stuff on the works. Got to get my Memphis and May schedule, uh, our, our uh, application in. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna I think we're gonna do ribs this year. Yeah, attack I'm it all for ribs. Yeah. That's my vote. And so that's man. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun year. And I hope this video podcast looks okay. We have no idea. We just said we're going to jump in and do it. Stick with it. And we're going to put it on YouTube. And you guys, I hope you can enjoy it. Shell, before we sign off today, tell them where they can find us. If you would like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to Barbecue Right at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, of course, YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell at Facebook. <laughs> Or, no, it's Miss Southern Shell, Instagram, and Twitter. Why don't you shake your head like, don't really, don't really connect with you. <laughs> don't do it. No. You can connect with me. On. <laughs> That's funny stuff. No. Hey, we appreciate y'all listening to the podcast. You can tell we're having a lot of fun here. Maybe I need a whiskey drink. <laughs> but uh, thanks for listening. And I, I made my point. I made a New Year's resolution this year to make more posts. On, on social Instagram, media, be more active on social. social you gotta media. get them followers up. If y'all aren't following Miss Southern Shell, you ought to. You're missing out. <laughs> I post all. She's the time. a socialite. She <laughs> posts all the time. She's everywhere. Every time I get a post, I think, Kardashian. Nobody really cares. <laughs> and then just put it back in my pocket. <laughs> well, that's okay, Shell. I care. I follow you, and I try to like everything you do. Okay. But hey, we appreciate y'all listening today. Um, you can always. Uh, Find us on all those places she <laughs> said you can find us, even her. And check out the app. If you don't have the app, download it. And we're going to uh, be putting yeah, all of our recipes and stuff on the app. And it's really cool. Week, it's free. Next week, and um, we'll be doing brisket on the jambo. Brisket on the jambo. First video coming. And some more fun stuff coming with it. We'll see you all next time.